you for coming. My name is uh, Hank Häusler. I'm the director of the ARC Training Center for Next Gen Art oh, Manufacturing. Hello, Henry. Um, also the director of Computation Design. Before I start, I would like to show my respect and acknowledge the pedagogical people who are the traditional custodians of the land on which this meeting takes place and their elders past and present. It's a great honor for me to introduce um, Masaki Iwamoto from Kyushu University today. We've got a, a long working relationship with Masaki um, for many, many years now on the Shoyo project. Um, Dr. Masaki Iwamoto is assistant professor at Kyushu University and a first class registered architect in Japan. Born in 1982 in Tokyo, Iwamoto studied architecture at the University of Tokyo and the Institute of Lightweight Structures and Conceptual Design in Stuttgart University. After having practiced as an architect in Tokyo, he joined Wodrong Ningya Architects in 2001 as a partner. We have met uh, Wodrong yesterday afternoon as well. And he became a driving force in a diverse range of conceptual projects. In 2015, Iwamoto moved his base to Japan and established his firm, ICADA, he joined Kyushu University as an assistant professor in 2016 and launched the Shoyu Archive in 2019. So today it's a great honor to have you here and to present um, your work on the Shoyu Archives, um, an architect that many of our students in computational design would know very, very well from the theory lectures. Thank you, Iwamoto. Thank you very much for your introduction and thank you for inviting me to UNSSW. I'm uh, very happy to talk here after the pandemic. We had a long collaboration, but unfortunately, these three, four years, we have no face-to-face -face communication or online, so I'm really happy to see you all here. And today, I'm also very glad that some of the students is joining me in this lecture, who is coming to Fukuoka in next September. It's soon. Six weeks. Only six weeks. So I hope uh, uh, it's the uh, studio you are working in Fukuoka is related to my lecture today. So I hope uh, you will enjoy and you have more expectation to your foreign studio in Fukuoka in Kyushu. So today I'm going to talk about Shoeyo Archive Project. It's a collaboration of Kyushu University and University of New South Wales since 2019, and also uh, talking, um, into, make an introduction of the very talented, interesting architect Shoe, Japanese architect Shoeyo, who is our research focus. So, Nico <laughs> is here. <laughs> and the reason why I, we are now doing Shoeyo Archive is thanks to Nico Gardner here in front. <laughs> I came to UNSW, no, Nico came to Kyushu University in 2017 and asked me if I know Shoeyo. Shoeyo is a famous Japanese architect, but to say very honestly, at that time, not very fashionable architect. Some young people is forgot, forget about the architect, so he is not very popular in 2000. 16 in Japan, but so I was very surprised why you are talking about Shoyo. He, I, of course I know, but he is, I was just surprised that foreign researcher coming to me and talking about Shoyo, because he is not very popular at that time. <laughs> so I asked her, and uh, she said uh, she is now regarded, uh, he is, Shoyo is now regarded as a, one of the pioneers of digital design. So I'm very much interested in the fact, and uh, I asked Shoeyo to come to Kyushu University and make a lecture in 2018. Shoeyo, uh, very, um, by chance, you, you did know that he is based in Fukuoka, where Kyushu University is located in. So I go to Shoeyo's office and ask if he can make a lecture for us. And for that lecture, Hank and uh, Scott, now he's in Adelaide. Um, some of uh, the uh, experts in Sydney 
come to Fukuoka and、uh, had a communication talk with、uh, Shoyo together. And、uh, it is the、uh, very beginning of our communication with Shoyo. And、uh, Shoyo talked to me. We became friendly. <laughs> and、uh, talked to me that he is thinking to close his architecture office in 2017. And he is about to dispose all his drawings, models, architectural documents because he has no storage or no place to store all his archive. So, We ask him not to demolish all the material because it's very important record of the architectural heritage in Kyushu. And we started to construct Shoyo Archive in Kyushu University in 2018. So Shoyo entrusted a lot of materials, more than 200 architectural models, more than 350 folders. Of drawings, it, may, it means 4,000, 5,000 drawings, and another lot of publications, books, and so on. So, we started to organize the materials.、Uh, it was in 2018, and we started to organize the architectural archive of architects. Show you in 2018. And、uh, at the same time,、uh, we started the research collaboration、uh, with UNSW.、Uh, we, for example, scanned the building together. You are seeing the <laughs> smartphone. <laughs> Watching a smartphone. <laughs> so、um, we had a really lot of work together. So now I can answer who is Shoyo more exactly.、Uh, Shoyo is a Japanese architect born in Kumamoto in Kyushu in Japan. So now he is 83 years old. And、uh, in 1950 to 62, he studied economics at Keio University, Tokyo, not architecture. Then he moved to US, Ohio, and studied. Art, applied art and design at Wittenberg University in the US. Then he came back to Japan, became the interior designer, then architect, and he found, founded the, his architecture office, design office, called Yo Design Office in Fukuoka in Kyushu. After that, he got a very important award in Japan. And he became the visiting professor at Columbia University in the US, and then a professor at Keio University in Japan. And now he retires and in, living in Kyushu. This is、uh, some of the projects Yoshoe designed.、Um, in the early stage, he started interior design, but then he moved to architecture and m a k e a very important. Masterpieces in the end of the 1980s and early in the 1990s. I will explain more about this project later. And、uh, why he is important is that, firstly,、um, he is regarded as one of the pioneers of the digital design.、Uh, there, is a, there was an exhibition called Archaeology of the Digital、uh, in 2013. At Canadian Center for Architecture in Montreal. And Greg Lin, a very important computational design guru or researcher,、uh, curated this exhibition and、uh, picked up Peter Eisenman, Frank Gehry, Chuck Hoberman, and Shoei Yo as a pioneers of the digital design. So,、uh, Shoei Yo is now known as a One of the pioneers of the digital from the computational design community. And there is also one more reason why Shoei Yo is at this moment evaluated 
because he, was, he is one of the important pioneers of the large-scale timber structure, timber architecture in Japan. Shoyo designed the Ogni Dome project. It's a sports uh, gymnasium in Kumamoto Prefecture. And uh, this is a very fast building with timber, very fast timber structure with more than 3,000 3, square meters in Japan. So, um, your show is building is positioned as a keywork in the renaissance of the contemporary wooden timber buildings in Japan. So, this is uh, why um, Shoyo is now started to be evaluated from Japanese context and also global context. Um, computational design, as you may know, is one of the most important trends of architectural design. And also timber became more and more important in the sustainable development context. So the reason why we are um, interested in and focusing on Shoyo archive is such a context. So I um, started to do a historical research about Shoeyo in collaboration with uh, Nicole, Hank, and Scott, and uh, wanted to know why and how Shoeyo became the pioneer of both digital and contemporary timber architecture. There is a lot of interesting context behind. I, ex I told you that he didn't study architecture, but economics. And to say more precisely, he studied econometrics. Econometrics is a mathematical analysis of economical situation. And uh, he studied econometrics under the guidance of Professor Iwao Ozaki, this guy. And Iwao Ozaki, a uh, professor of Keio University, he was a uh, most important authority of econometrics in Japan at that time. So Shoyo was, did know the power of computer to analyze, analyze the things when he was very young, when he was uh, in Keio University. As economics student, economics student, he understood the power of computer. Then, but he didn't go to economic uh, way, but uh, he moved to design. Uh, in Tokyo, in late 1960s, there were a lot of architecture and interior design flourished. And one day, Shoeyo uh, went to Air France office in Tokyo, designed by Charlotte Perrin, famous um, interior designer. She was a uh, collaborator of the Luko Vige and design a lot of very beautiful interior furniture and so on. And Shoeyo was inspired by the Tokyo office and realized that he wanted to study design. So he moved to US and uh, studied fine art and applied art and design at Wittenberg University, Ohio, USA. He, at this moment, he still didn't study architecture, but more about art and design. And uh, he, but he already started to be interested in architecture and structure. So he's inspired by German structure engineer or he was inspired by um, classic architecture. And especially he was inspired by the natural phenomena found in the traditional or classic building. And he wanted to express the similar thing in the contemporary modern architecture. Um, after he studied in US, he came back to Japan and he became the interior designer at an office called International Design Associates in Tokyo. Very interestingly, he was also 
uh, involved in a project in Sydney. Do you know this building in Sydney? <laughs> this is a Reader Digest office in Sydney. And Shoei Yo did the uh, interior design of this project. He said, I don't know about the detail, but he said he came to Sydney to supervise this project and uh, swimming in the Bondi Beach. And, so <laughs> and after working in the interior office, he opened his design office uh, called Yo Design Office in Fukuoka. And he started his career as an interior designer, not an architect. So he had a lot of beautiful interior design project in 1970s, early 1970s. At that time, he was he is trying to give the form to the light as natural phenomenon. So this is a very beautiful essay by Shoyo. Light is light and light. The light itself has no weight, no shape, and no shadow. It is absolutely free and eternal. I have been always fascinated with the light from the beginning of my own career started in 1970. So he designed a lot of lighting, uh, design and interior design, such as this wireless lamp project. This is very beautiful project. Um, this tube is luminous, but without any wire and uh, without any batteries. He puts the gas inside of the plastic tube and under this uh, uh, stone table, there is a microwave and door open. <laughs> and uh, there is a microwave coming from the bottom <laughs> and ga gas, how can I say in English? But maybe you understand already. <laughs> because of the gas reaction, it uh, illuminates. Very dangerous. <laughs> and he said he was very conceptual designer <laughs> at the time. It was not uh, um, applied in the industry, by the <laughs> industry, because it was very dangerous. But he produced a really beautiful conceptual project, um, houses and so on. This is a house in Nagasaki, also in Kyushu area. Uh, he pursued light and transparency. Uh, this is uh, his furniture glass chair uh, on the cover of Italian architecture magazine. Some sketch and uh, pictures. Um, in archive, uh, we got all the drawings and all the pictures from his office. So we are organizing the materials and at the same time start to research about the project. And uh, in order to realize a very unique light condition or transparent condition, he is uh, researching advanced technology at that time. And uh, this, for example, cafeteria was the very first uh, glass building, four-sided structure glazed glass building in Japan in 1973. Or another very interesting building, clinic in Fukuoka, applied uh, fiber reinforced plastic as a building envelope. This was a very fast trial again in Japan. Um, if some of the students will come to Fukuoka, it's in Fukuoka, not very far from the university. So it would be nice to visit this clinic. If you have stomach ache, you can <laughs> go there. Very nice doctor is waiting for you. This is a doctor. But he is very old now. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is a drawing. 
there is a lot of context, of course, behind. At that time, in 1960s and 70s, um, postmodern architecture and postmodern design was very, very influential. For example, Super Studio, Italian uh, architect group, uh, proposed this kind of very uh, minimum, continuous monument uh, with grid pattern and so on. You see the kind of similar uh, aesthetic uh, in the works of Shoe Yo. This building, applying the advanced technology at that time, FRP, fiber laid plastic, and he is also uh, inspired by Star Wars. This is a Star Wars episode four was on screen in on in 1978 June in Japan. Two months after, show you show you design this building. Uh, his staff told me that uh, show you went to the movie, came back and make this sketch of this building. So it is very um, nice. Uh, nice time <laughs> for architects and designers who can be inspired by very new ideas and apply it very immediately. <laughs> um, turning point of Shoe Yo is Oguni project uh, started in 1984. Oguni is the name of small town in Kumamoto Prefecture in Kyushu and uh, famous for cedar forestry. Famous for cedar forestry. Uh, to say very honestly, not very famous for any other thing. <laughs> so <laughs> at that time, uh, or even now, the town is suffered by depopulation and uh, trying to find a way to survive in the depopulation and the shortage of the people working for the forestry industry. Um, in 1984, uh, mayor of Oguni town called Shoe Yo and asked to make the master plan of city center uh, utilizing the uh, post-industrial sites. It means there was a train, train station, but train, train became closed because of the depopulation. So uh, Mayor asked uh, Shoeyo to change the station into the bus terminal and other community facilities using timbers, local cedar, and thinned wood timbers. So Shoeyo started to working with natural materials. So this is a very important turning point for him. Because before that, he was more like modern, modern materials, glass, transparency, plastic, fiber lace post, post fiber, fiber lace post, plastic, and so on. But Thanks to the Oguni project, he uh, started to be interested in using natural materials. And uh, using natural material was actually a very um, modern issue at that time. In Japan, as you may know, almost all traditional building is built using timber. But in the World War II and some earthquakes, always timber building is very uh, badly damaged and also by typhoon and so on. So after the very huge typhoon in 1959, the Architecture Institute of Japan decided to prohibit the large-scale wooden architecture. So since then, uh, the Building Standard Act, Building Code in Japan, uh, that didn't allow the design of large-scale timber building 
over 30 meter height or more than 3,000 square meters. So Japan had a long tradition of timber, but Japan prohibited by ourselves to design the large-scale timber because of the disasters. As therefore, it was a huge challenge to use uh, timber and make the uh, uh, new modern structures at that time. So Shoeyo went to a lot of timber building, traditional timber building in Japan, such as Ise Jingu Shrine, famous timber building. He visited a lot of sites, but he realized that Japan didn't have a large scale <laughs> timber building in their history. So he tried to look for other differences in the world and found some interesting uh, timber building designed in Germany in 1974. So after finding some reference, um, he designed a, a large scale timber structure for Ogni town. This is a model of initial proposal for the Ogni Dome Gymnasium project exhibited uh, in Tokyo in 1985. So he collaborated with structure engineer called Gengo Matsui and designed this building. Um, challenge is that in order to design the timber structure, large-scale timber structure, it should be structurally calculated. Otherwise, you cannot prove the safety and so on. And at that time, the challenge was how to prove the uh, quality, structural quality of the timber building. Uh, even for the timber building, we use some steel for the connection, joints, and so on. And, but people didn't know how the force will be conveyed from timber part to the steel part and steel part to the timber part. Uh, in that situation, Professor Gengo Matsui, Shoyo's collaborator, found a way to convey the force from timber to steel using the epoxy resin and make a way to create a new kind of timber structure in Japan. Shoeyo exhibit this in Tokyo because he was very happy to find out the way to create the large-scale timber building, but it was a huge mistake, he said. Um, staff uh, officer of Ministry of Construction came to the exhibition and found that Shoeyo is designing the building, timber building, with more than 3,000 square meter. It is out of regulation, illegal <laughs> building. So officer of Minister, Ministry of Construction asked him to prove the safety. Otherwise, he cannot build the project. Even the city mayor is asking him to design that. So, Shoeyo had to prove the safety, and then he made small prototype. He designed a very small prototype in Kumamoto Aso area. It was a music atelier project. This is a very fast timber space frame in Japan. Uh, it's small building, now it's vacant. Uh, but uh, designed for the uh, music practice for musicians uh, near the, uh, because it's near the concert hall, uh, exterior concert hall. And Shoeyo proved the safety of the timber, modern timber truss structure using this building. So this building became the milestone to achieve the bigger scale uh, timber structure in Oguni town. For the student of who is coming to uh, Fukuoka Kyushu next uh, August, September, 
this building is our focus. Now, the building is vacant since more than 10 years. Uh, but it's very in the very beautiful setting, very beautiful forest, having a beautiful view to the volcanic landscape. And it has a heritage value, historical importance as a very fast uh, modern timber space frame structure in Japan and became the very became the milestone to open up the door to the contemporary timber structure. So it's very historically also very important. Beautiful building, historically important, nice landscape, but it's vacant. So we need an idea <laughs> how to rehabilitate this building. Now this building is uh, owned by Kumamoto Prefecture. Prefecture. Kumamoto Prefecture has no idea. Maybe they don't know that they have this building. <laughs> so um, we are going to invite some uh, authority, uh, officer from the regional authority, and tell them that you have a very nice building, and we have an idea to use this building as, I don't know, Maybe you will think about it in August and September. So I'm really looking forward to having your ideas. And if the people like the idea, maybe it will be realized in, I don't know, one, two years, three years. It can be realized, really. So I'm looking forward to having a very nice idea from you. So this is a music artery. Very fast prototype. After that, uh, uh, Ministry of Construction was convinced. Regional authority became happy about the yard structure, and Ogni project started to be constructed. In 1986, uh, Ogni bus terminal was built in the middle of the town, and uh, this is a very fast um, example of using digital uh, analysis, computational analysis, and uh, timber structure at the same time. Um, in collaboration with structure computational engineer at Taiyo Kogyo Corporation uh, in Japan. Shoeyo decided the geometry of complex uh, truss structure in collaboration with the uh, engineer of Taiyo Kogyo Corporation using um, structure analysis uh, <laughs> software at that time. And in 1988, a uh, very fast timber building with more than 3,000 square meter in Japan was built. It is a Ogni Dome project. This is a huge building, spans 56 meter, and uh, 3D truss timber is composed of more than 5,600 uh, timber loads and 1,455 metal joints. This is a structure document, document of the project. It is very interesting that they are using the numerical analysis at the same time that making the uh, documentation by hand. So it shows a very, uh, very unique point of the transition from the analog structure calculation to the digital calculation. After this Ogni project, Shoeyo had an um, experience of using a computer as a Analyze analysis tool. He is finding he found he was interested in using the computer to create a form and create a design. Um, Galaxy Toyama project. This is also the 3D, three-dimensional truss structure project. And this is the beginning of parametric design 
by Shoyo. But I mean parametric design that um, for Ogni project, the form of the root shape is decided by architect and structure engineer using computer to optimize, find the optimal solution for the form given by the architect. So in the dialogue between architect and engineer, the span will be modified or the uh, depth of the structure is modified and so on. But overall form was initially um, defined by the architect. But show you find the potential to make the form using computer and design this Galaxy 12 project. It means um, he decided the parameter. Uh, this building should have a straight edges on the roof and some point, there is a, some uh, point of the column stands and there is a, a snow force, wind force and so on. Uh, if you decide the parameter of the building, uh, the form of the complicated three-dimensional loop is um, generated as an output of the uh, computational calculation. This is a parametric design. If you decide, decide the parametry, par parameter, you have an output and it becomes a form and design. Now, this is not very unique way of thinking. This is, I think, a student of computational design in this USW doing everyday parametric design using uh, grasshopper and so on. But at that time, no one knows about parametric design. There is no words of parametric design. So Shoei Yo um, found that architecture can be generated using parameter. I think it is very um, nice and uh, unique moment in the history of computational design. Yeah, um, he didn't trust computer so much. <laughs> <laughs> so he have to be, um, he wanted to be sure about computer. He made a computer analysis in collaboration with Taiyo Kogyo company. But at the same time, he asked the professor Gengo Matsui uh, to operate the uh, photoelastic uh, experiment. I'm sorry, maybe this is different. I said. Photoelastic experiment. Photoelastic structure experiment is a little bit difficult to explain, but using the uh, photoelasticity <laughs> to see the deformation of the materials and see the uh, uh, force to see the to visualize the force of the building. And so I uh, found that result of photoelastic experiment and result of computational design coincidence. So that uh, Shoeyo uh, think thought computational analysis is trustful because different uh, experiment gives him the same result. He said the uh, principles are very different, but three results. Actually, he made a model and see the fringe of the model. So this there is a three different way show the coincidence. So it is a correspondence of natural phenomena. He said, and he started to believe in computer. So in the mid 1990s, 
he designed a lot of building using computer. And uh, this is a, a very interesting building in Fukuoka in Kyushu. This building is also very calm, <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately, but it's very innovative project. I made uh, the um, presentation about this building in Melbourne uh, last week in a conference of the structure engineering. So uh, I'm talking about this building a little bit in more in detail. What is interesting for this building is that this building is using bamboo. <laughs> he was, Shoyo is interested in natural materials, timber. Then he started to be interested in using bamboo as building material. And the building is using the geometry of origami and had a very uh, a computational structure analysis uh, early examples uh, computational structure analysis at that time. The design of this building began in May 1993 at the request of the town mayor, Chikuho town mayor. And uh, from the very beginning of the design, Shoyo wanted to use bamboo as building material. This building uh, is uh, resembles the moment of a hand handkerchief is picked up. I don't have handkerchief, but <laughs> <laughs> so and uh, he want to make this form using bamboo and uh, origami geometry. He said the starting point of Niger Community Center was the idea of using bamboo, inspired by the bamboo shoot canary in Chikuho town. There was a canary, uh, bamboo shoot canary. And he was inspired by that fact and makes, uh, wanted to make a bamboo building. And there was also another inspiration. In Oguni town, he visited the Yukinogawa Bridge, this picture. It is a bamboo reinforced concrete structure uh, built before World War II. Before World War II, Japan has a material shortage. So, uh, Engineer need to use cannot use a lot of steel. So engineer try to use bamboo instead of steel and uh, cast the concrete. He Shoyo was very much interested in that fact and uh, hoped to use bamboo as building material. So he tried a temporary structure in Fukuoka in 1989 in collaboration with structure engineer Gengo Matsui. This is a bamboo dome project, and this is very fast legal bamboo structure in Japan, but temporary structure. So I wanted to uh, design bamboo structure, take, um, permanent bamboo structure in Chikuho town, and structure engineer did a calculation or sketches, or again, photo elastic experiments and send a sketch to show you. Uh, but uh, in the end, Shoyo and engineer Gengo Matsui quitted to make a bamboo structure building because it was too difficult to achieve in the Japanese architecture regulation. Even today, bamboo building is not allowed to build in Japan. And 20 30 years before, uh, 30 years ago, it was impossible. So he decided to use bamboo, not as a main material, main structure material, but create the formwork and cast the concrete only. And he uh, tried to find the uh, form suitable to his concept. Uh, this is uh, some architecture, early architecture model uh, created by Shoei Yo Design Office. This model is made by placing a stick, this is a stick, on cardboard as a base and placing the fabric on top of the stick, then fix its uh, perimeter here, perimeter, 
to the base with pins. And this method of model making is similar to the actual construction pr process. I will explain to you later. And from this early model, he based on the physical models, uh, Shoeo uh, made the early 3D model and rendering of the project and uh, pre make a presentation to the city mayor, town mayor. And uh, after the design was approved, approved by the mayor, he needed to make a detailed design and structural calculation. In order to do the structural calculation analysis, it is necessary to know the coordinates of the three-dimensional surface. Define the position of the three-dimensional three surface. And for this, uh, Shoeo created the physical model using origami geometry. Because using origami, geometry is very clear. So if the form, curve, three-dimensional curve surface is created using origami, architect can decide where the coordinates of each point of the surface. So this is very interesting uh, moment. And uh, after architect uh, uh, understands the coordinate of the building using origami model, they send that information to the uh, structure engineer in Kagoshima. Uh, he was a specialist of the FEM uh, finite element analysis method of concrete shell structure. And uh, the engineer did a structural calculation of the project. So without origami model, it, is, it was impossible for structure engineer to calculate because they don't know the uh, coordinate. It is very interesting that the physical model did a, had a very important role to connect the architect and the engineer in the very beginning of the computational design. Nowadays, all the students can make a 3D model and know the position of the surface automatically, self-automatically, it's very easy. But at that time, it was quite difficult to understand the imagined surface and <laughs> coordinates of the each point. So the physical model helped them a lot. I wanted to show you a movie. Now share. This is a Twitter of my student <laughs> who is making a origami model of the Naishu Community Center. So it's a square paper folding. Folding, folding. And you get the building. So the geometry, it is very clear and uh, Finding, they found that the building, the origami idea was not in the first place. After he made a model, uh, or first model, he, they found that geometry can be understood using origami, folding paper. I think it is very interesting moment of the project. And the construction process of the building is also very inspiring. Not only using local materials, bamboo, but also there was a, a local people's partic participation, in community participation in the construction process. Uh, Shoyo said that the fact that building was built by local people using local material gives the community a sense of pride. So um, Shoyo decided to work with Carpenter, not a huge construction company, and the uh, local, local carpenter uh, undertook the, all the construction, including the mock-ups, model making, and so on. This, yeah.
Yeah, he is a carpenter. He also casts concrete and so on. And uh, also, as, as I explained, the formwork is made of bamboo netting, and the, the work of weaving bamboo is done by the local people. Sure, you said that we try to leave traces of their hands or rather the traces of everyone's sweat work doing this bamboo netting work together. Community participation also became the key term of architecture design or community design in 21st century. I was very surprised that found, found the fact that Shoeo did this kind of activities uh, 30 years ago in Kumamoto uh, in Japan. So after the netting was woven by the community, it was lifted by grain and covered over the, over the temporary street steel structure. It will be removed later. Uh, there is a ring on top. It became the skylight later. And there is a cable. It defines the reach of the building. And bamboo net is put onto the, this and formed like origami structure. This bamboo net is defined the shape, but not carrying the structure. Structure is carried by concrete. So the shoring and scaffolding has to be inserted into the netting and withstand the load of the concrete. After that, uh, curved surface was sheeted, sprayed with red and foam, and river was placed on it according to the structure drawings, and concrete was placed in five separated stages using flying box. This is flying box. Concrete is inside <laughs> and cast. <laughs> it is a uh, um, very unusual way of concrete casting. Carpenters uh, think about that, this idea and did it. So it's very unique building. The re one of the reasons why carpenter did it because general contractor didn't want to work for this project. There was a bidding, but no, no one wanted to uh, participate in the project. Then the second bidding, nobody. Third bidding, carpenters in the region uh, gathered in the meeting room, unofficially, and somebody has to do this work because this is the pride of the town. And there was the youngest carpenter. You are youngest, so you will do this project. <laughs> he was a um, Mr. Uh, he was a Mr. Isao Kawakami, but he was really great and he uh, very much motivated and uh, achieved this unprecedented, very difficult construction. And uh, this very beautiful building was built. And the inauguration ceremony was held in the end of 1994. And uh, mayor was very happy. He said it would be a catalyst for community revitalization. But unfortunately, this building was forced to close temporarily in 2001 because of the river pollution in the neighborhood. And uh, then in 2007, it was closed because of the depopulation. So it is, again, this building is too uh, empty since 15 years. So this is a, a example of Naiji Community Center. All the building of Shoyo has a very interesting story behind. I didn't talk about the music atelier project here, not very in detail. When you come to Fukuoka, one of my students or student group will make a presentation about the building and uh, start in order to start the communication, having making an idea together. Maybe one. And uh, 
in the end, uh, I want to talk about uh, the, our exhibition uh, in Australian Design Center two years ago. Two years ago. So, um, Nicole and Hank and Daniel, everybody in USW is working, collaborating for the exhibition. I just sent the data, <laughs> sent the images, and uh, um, Daniel created a very beautiful 3D model and uh, scan, uh, uh, printing, 3D printed. You can see some of the model in this building, in the, yeah. And uh, there is a model of music atelier as well. There's also one outside here. Mm. So I think uh, it's going to be nice if you can get the 3D data from Daniel and start to, I don't know, think about the idea or, I don't know, some using the model as basis of uh, thinking about the idea. And there is a web page about Shoyo Archive. You can find it on the internet. And you can see the drawings of music atelier or other project as well. Yeah. And there is a VR exhibition. This is a digital archive of the project. A lot of drawings you can find, pictures, drawings you can find in the exhibition. So I'm uh, looking forward to having the student of UNSW in Fukuoka in August, September, and uh, hoping that your great idea will save the empty, <laughs> empty heritage in danger. Thank you very much for your Thank you very much. Are there any questions from the audience? The music atelier job essentially was to convince the authorities that this space frame method was safe. What did they do if they didn't have a simulation? Did they did they do anything to the music atelier to, to stress test it or anything to prove its safety? Yeah. Did they stand on top of it and shake it? Or... Uh, how did they prove? The music oh, yeah. um, they, okay. uh, they did a lot of uh, experiment in the laboratory. So um, to say, precise to say, there's a timber and steel is connected using epoxy resin. So they made a structural material experiment in the laboratory again and again and proved the uh, safety against the vertical force or horizontal force, wind force and different um, different condition. Then uh, makes a full documentation about the structure analysis and material experiment and submitted to the um, committee, so-called committee, <laughs> and committee approved to the proposal, and it was built, and committee member came to the construction site and see if the building is designed and constructed according to the proposal. So at that time, demand of committee was very, very difficult. There is a uh, not hole. Of course, because it's timber, there is a knot hole, but they didn't accept the knot hole bigger than 20, no, 10 millimeter. It is very unusual because timber has a lot of knot hole and it's usually more than 20 millimeter or 15 millimeter and so on. But committee member didn't accept more than 10 millimeter. So Shoeryo design office and construction company needed to check all the timber if there's a knot hole or not, and uh, use the everything without very only the beautiful material. Such a condition was assigned or demanded by committee, 
uh, after the in the approval process. So after that, for Ogni project, some of the conditions can become the easier because committee member uh, understood that the structure is safer. So for example, it can be used the timber with some knot hole can be used for the building and so on. And uh, it is very, very important because at that time there is no regulation about timber quality in Japan. So Shoeyo's work in collaboration with structure engineer and such committee uh, gives a very early example or standard how uh, timber can be used as a contemporary architecture in Japan. Thank you very much for the wonderful presentation. I was wondering the uh, casting uh, process of uh, pouring the concrete on the surface of that building. Uh, I was thinking uh, how it can be possible because the, the, the surface would have a very uh, special form and slope. Mm -hmm. So when you're pouring this uh, concrete, it would uh, curl down. <laughs> and so if you could uh, explain. Yes. Very interesting, uh, important and uh, interesting question. I asked uh, this about to the carpenter. It's very steep. So as you said, uh, uh, if you cast the concrete, If you cast the concrete, it flows to the bottom. <laughs> there is a lot of worker waiting for the bottom with scope. <laughs> and uh, when after the concrete flows down, they go, <laughs> they shovel the concrete and again <laughs> go lifting again to the top. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very Hard. Labor intensive. <laughs> hard work. And uh, they, of course, use a very hard concrete using uh, steel um, fiber reinforced concrete. But because of that uh, uh, pump, pump was <laughs> kaput. Kaput gigan, broken. Broken. It was broken because of the. Uh, um, <laughs> because of the too hard concrete. So it's really difficult construction. And there was no fantastic idea way to overcome the construction, but it is thanks to the human's hands and sweat, local's hands and sweat, they achieved this. Something to add, if you actually visit this building, the scale is really deceptive. Small. It's very small. Yeah. So it's been built for a nursery type, sort of like, you know, children's center. So I will meet when I visit it. Scale-wise, you could just jump onto the roof. Like it's that small. So it's I think sometimes the... 22 meter paper yeah. is folded. It's like a playground. <laughs> so they, I think I didn't realize that when I first looked at the project. That's yeah, you can see the scale of the people standing on top there. So the the, the arch at the bottom and the picture B at the bottom they're not up down. Oops, sir. Um, it's just like a bit over two meters. So I just walked in there with maybe that much space above me. Henry. Henry. <laughs> 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 